Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hair Tube for 2022. And I'm with uh, Ginny, familiar face to you guys. Yeah, the hair is still blonde, but it's a lot longer than uh, what we remember. Um, it's been a while, obviously we've been locked down here in Australia and we're out and about and getting back on with things. So um, Ginny said she wants to keep her hair long, but uh, the regrowth is starting to become something that's hard for her to manage. So we've been speaking about uh, keeping her roots dark, so intentionally stretching the roots. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, and we need volume and movement in her hair because she's finding it's a bit heavy. Um, obviously um, with her type of hair texture, it's quite heavy. So um, we're gonna do a cool shape. We're thinking about some shape around the front, lightening her right up a little bit in terms of the weight of the hair, but still keeping it long, so it'll be fun. Yeah. Yay. So um, I'm excited to do your hair, it's been a while. She may have cheated on me once or twice, but <laughs> i got to now convince her why it's better not to next time. <laughs> I'm going to get out the back, mix up some colour, we'll get back, get started, see you soon. What I need to do first, and it's a little, it's a little tricky, is to break up Ginny's regrowth um, with some foils. And look, I'm not going to go and do a full head, but we need to definitely break up the parting the hairline and in the nape a little bit before we go and um, stretch a root. When we go and stretch the root, it'll just help blend it a little bit. So we'll get that um, broken up look rather than just like contrasting dark to light. So I'm gonna go through, do some foils, um, and then I'll have a bit more of a chat to you about what the color is I'm gonna use on the root stretch. But I'm using Matrix Light Master with Bonda and 30 Vol. Um, so we're gonna go through, do some foils, and I'll be back soon. your bags we're leaving today what is taking you so long don't look back we're on our way turn up our favorite song okay foils are in so a little recap the idea is that we foil the regrowth about a centimeter apart full head sectioning but obviously not back to back um, just to sort of shatter the regrowth a little bit. So when we stretch the root, it just doesn't look like, you know, big black lines. So the whole idea is that we're gonna um, shadow the root probably around like a level maybe six or seven. Obviously Ginny's roots are about a level three. So the idea is to sort of have some synergy between natural base, uh, root stretch, and then ends. Um, the other thing we're gonna do is I'm actually going to, once the, it's been processed, I'm going to try and clean out these ends a little bit and make them even wider and brighter. So let all that process and we'll be back soon. And um, when you see us next, we'll be doing a root stretch. On the path to find a place for us both to belong. Stay on track, just needed faith for us both to be strong. And all the stress will be erased At the end of the day Take my hand, we'll be okay Let us both move on We are back from the basin. Whew! Man, that was a big job. So let's um, recap what we did. So, Ginny wanted to start to transition away from on scalp lightener because she's enjoying a long hair and we know that if we're going to have on scalp lightener it makes it tough to maintain the integrity and condition of the hair because inevitably you're going to, inevitably you're going to get overlap so what I did first is I went in just using my weaving highlight comb um, I just very uh, gently broke the regrowth up uh, using powder lightener with Bonda 30 vol then I went back and I root stretched it with uh, 7NV um, half 7NV, half, uh, half 5 double M, and a dash of 3VV because I want to have this beautiful sort of glow. I don't want like natural dead roots and just, I don't know, I want something a bit different. Then um, I wanted to have a little bit of smokiness onto the ends and try and tone down some of that yellow. I've done that using SPV and 8V um, at the basin with 30, uh, with, sorry, with 10 vol and just toning that through. Uh, we've just done our treatment and now we're back. Uh, we're going to cut Ginny's hair dry today, so I'm going to start drying it off a little bit and then we'll get started.
with uh, Ginny's haircut. We're just going to nick the ends off so you can see the ends are a little bit dry. Um, and then we're just going to, she wants to have some shape around the face. So what that'll do is it'll lighten it up for a little bit so it won't be so heavy um, and obviously create some movement. And then we're also going to do some like seamless lays in the back so we've got some volume without that classic sort of layered look. So I'm actually going to start uh, with the shape in the front, I think, and then we'll, we'll trim the ends last. Triangle section, about three inches back. And this is going to be our versatile, um, I guess you can call them curtain bangs, short layers, fringe, face frame, whatever you want. But this is the beginning of the shape for me. I always like to start this way. Let's tuck this and that. I'll spin the chin around so you can see. Head down for me, darling. Yep, and up. And then. We want to go just below the chin. Let me just put it down a little bit that way you guys can see. Just remember that the hair will, you think it's, it's quite long. And then when we wear it with a bit of bend in it and we push it back off the face, because the hair travels and you've given it shape, it reduces its length. So just make sure that you keep in mind. Before you go cutting it too short, make sure you're aware of how it's going to be worn. Otherwise, at the end, you're going to have a bit of an uncomfortable conversation about um, why it looks good shorter when that wasn't what you are planning on doing. And I think the reason why it's important to have that conversation while I fish out another comb is because it's not not about you know you made a mistake or whatever it's about meeting client expectations so if someone asks for something that it's you know it's a specific thing like i want it here it's really important that we you know we meet their expectations and we just do what we're asked so now when we comb this back you can see that that's where it's going to be that's the beginning of the shape we use that as a guide for the rest so when i'm doing when I'm doing this, one of the things that, that is really important for me is that we use the projection to determine how the hair is going to fall, not texturising. So I don't go cutting blunt lines and then go and texturise um, the hair afterwards. I like to use projection, so I'll spin Ginny this way so you can see. So I'm going to use the projection above 90 degrees using that initial shape there is the guide you can see that just in here and then you can see it falls soft because the further away we project the hair from zero and cut it the softer it falls so that will mean that I don't have to use texturizing to make the hair sit soft because what I did was I used projection and then we just cross check before we move on to the next section always cross check from the top looking down Make sure we bring it to the same projection and just make sure that it's good there. Yep, brilliant. Spin Ginny around so you can see. You can see our section previously, it's there. Just underneath here in the front. We're gonna wait till that falls out, there it goes. And we use almost like a shark fin end to just make sure we're going from short to long. Then we're going to give it some texture just to make sure that we don't have heavy lines. But don't go cutting across your design line because you'll make it chunky. Again, just like we did the first section. using projection to ensure the hair falls where we need it to. And there it is, not a lot to cut.
Cross check. A little bit of texture. Cross check, a little bit of texture. Like I said, we don't want to have to rely on this to make it sit well. We're just using it to enhance and then again, going to cross check through the middle to make sure that falls nice and soft. Then we're going to project low and cross check. So any little hairs that sort of jump out at us, we can just take off and the same on the other side. Yep, look at those, those little ones there. Beautiful. Now, I'm gonna brush that off the face. And we use the length on top. Bring Jenny to the side. We use the length on top here as our guide into the back. And bring that back in here. It's time to do the back. So we're bringing the hair back this way. And we're going to use a triangle here. So it's more like a more like a pie, like a slice of pie section or a pizza, slice of pizza. And then we're going to use that as our guide for layering in the back. Hair falls out underneath. It's not meant to reach. We'll see our guide from the front. There it is there. And now we've got our guideline for the back. You can see it falls seamlessly. There's no chunks there. Just knots. Not anymore. We want that, right? We want it to be volume, but we want this to not look chunky. Now what we do is we bring this all together at once. If you can't manage to do that, then that's fine. You can split it up, but I like to do it all at once. So now it's an even wider section. And we bring it all in together. This won't reach anyway. I can see it already. Shift the distribution to the back. And that comes off before we drop this time. So make sure in the center. And again, give the hair room to expand. Be careful not to cut in sideways to this. If you do, you will make it chunky and then it will no longer look seamless. You'll actually see every single little mark. So this again is just to allow the hair to have room to move and expand. So it doesn't all have to fall in one point. And now I'm gonna shift it to the front because it makes it even softer again because the further we project the hair from where it's gonna fall and we cut it, the softer it will be when it gets back there. You can see that's seamless, beautiful. We're just gonna nick this off. I'm gonna do some styling. just need to nick these ends off and just clip this up here out of the way. I was saying to Ginny just then, I actually like how the ends are because it's, they're like sort of textured. But um, look, they look good now, but they're not going to in a few weeks time. So they will look like they really need a haircut. And one of the parts that I struggled to get that little bit lighter was just the very ends there. Um, so by nicking that off, we're just going to also um, do the colour a bit more justice as well. So a centimetre off the ends will make a, a pretty uh, significant difference without um, compromising the, the goal, which is, you know, want to grow our hair and wear it a little bit longer. Again, it's always about, for me, meeting client expectations. It's never about uh, me and what I think they should have. Obviously, I'm always going to recommend what I believe to 
suit, um, but that doesn't mean that it's um, the right thing to do. Um, well, regardless of what we think looks good or doesn't, if we fail to meet our client's expectations, even if we've done an amazing haircut, um, we failed unfortunately. So very important to make sure that if someone says I want a centimetre, hey, so it's, I don't know why some hairdressers are obsessed with cutting extra, you know. It's like people pay me for what I leave behind, not for what I cut off. So if they want a centimetre, a centimetre exactly is what they get. I mean, I don't get a rule around and measure it, but that's what they get. And it's you know never just a trim. It's it's a significant um, amount off, and it's enough to make it look different and to improve the health and the condition. And um, as long as I'm leaving behind what I was after, asked to, then that's all that matters. How many times, Ginny, have you had a haircut? Not by me, obviously, but, and then you've said, I just want a little bit, and they take a lot. Mm. Happens a lot, huh? Mm. I don't understand. I really don't. I don't know why. It shouldn't happen, but it does. I'll just get you to look to your left, darling, if that's all right. Perfect, thank you. Look to the left, we nick these lens off. Just there. And I'll scoot around the other side. And now look to the right. Thank you. And just try to head for me, darling. Perfect. Now it's time to do some styling. Let me just blast it off your face. Have a bit of a squeeze. What do you reckon? I love it. Big day. Mm. Big change. That's what we wanted. Mm. So the plan is from here forward is for Ginny to be able to just come into the salon and have foils, um, just to break her regrowth up and um, not have to worry about doing on scalp anymore. So we can get the hair longer and look after the condition of the hair. I think we've done that today. So little recap on what we did. We just did some um, weaves into the roots, in the hairline and in through the parting just to be able to sort of get some brightness in there so it didn't look like we just made a roots bigger and, and dark like natural uh, roots are. We want it to look like a, like a fashion look. So by doing that it allowed the colour to grab that and highlight, highlight the area but only slightly lighter than a natural colour, not obviously light like the ends. Then we clean the ends out, you can see that um, you know, it's, it's beautiful and clean now so we did that. Here got rid of the yellow out of the ends, deepen the root, give that shadow. What more can we say? It's been another good day. Please trust me again. I reckon she cut it off. <laughs> My hat. Long is nice. Yeah. Looks great. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. Um, if you uh, like what you see, please uh, make sure you share it with people, especially those who are on their hairdressing journey. It's important that we share our skills so we help each other grow. Ginny, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. See you guys next time. Take care.